as my job as as a catcher, and I you know you threw to a lot of good catchers and you know, great catchers, is the catcher's job is to get you comfortable. Mm-hmm. So you know, I always try to break the ice. Hey, God, where do you want me to sit? You know, so that you feel comfortable when we're going away or we're going in. How do you want me to set up? Do you you want you want the glove out? You want it down? You know, whatever it was to make you feel comfortable, just before you even threw a pitch, you know, then you get to ask him, okay, what do you throw? Oh, you know, and then once you start catching him in that side, you know, a little bit before the game or what have you, then it's like, hey, whatever I can do to make you feel more comfortable, and then as we go, that's why it's tougher in these showcases, because you haven't caught a pitch until you get out there for the five or six in between innings, you know, I mean, that's where the rapport and the personal connection, I mean, for any catcher, I mean, this is a man right here, so, you know, I'm like, Hey, what do you need? Okay, because <laughs> any catcher should want, you know, the pitchers. Hey, that's my guy. I want to throw to him. Right. So. Right. And I think a lot of times that's what's most important is that you know coming up in the system and the times that we came up. And of course, it's a little different, but you almost have to look at it like an all-star game. Mm-hmm. You know, everywhere you go, you may not be with the catcher that you've had a really good successful season for half mm-hmm. part, halfway through the season. But you're now with a guy that made the all-star team. Or you're now with a guy that's quality behind the plate, can do more things. But actually, his main focus would be to, like you said, I mean, that's what you guys brought to the game, is that you brought that energy. And and most times, you guys as catchers didn't get enough credit because you was always saying, I have 12 to 15 pitchers on a team. Mm -hmm. And everybody has different mentalities and attitudes and right. different pitches sometimes. So now I got to work with <laughs> different emotions all the time. So I credit you guys for that. And, I, and it was almost like hearing some of the best catchers in the game say, you know what, my job is to help you get out of a tough inning. My job is to give you one pitch. Mm-hmm. My job is to give you five pitches if I need to. Because you know with Pedro, you can probably say, you only need one pitch and right. you can help him out. But you know, with me, you might need four or five. You know? <laughs> However, you guys' job was just, you know, so uniquely different and in every way it was the best other than pitching position to play because you touched the ball every single time yeah you know and in today's game I mean, these kids are still getting that opportunity but of course we're seeing bigger stronger faster yeah. um, even some kids that can can catch they can play first base third base, they can do more things however their main objective is to learn to play right while we're here on this stage this perfect game stage for these young men yes is the largest stage, the stage that kids want to be seen at. Mm-hmm. And the catcher's behind the plate. He can call his game. He can say what he knows, but he also is working with that pitcher trying to figure out how to help him. Mm-hmm. And it sets you up for people noticing that you're all, you're all around talent. Yep. Work, and that's what I enjoy about it. That's, what you throw is obviously different from the next pitcher that's coming in, whether it's maybe the same right hand or left hand or different slot, different, you know, movement on pitches and everything. So the first thing is you just want to get get them comfortable as, you know, as you can. And you can't be too hard on yourself from the catching perspective because you're breaking balls not like this guy's breaking ball and this guy's fastball's not like this guy's fastball. So you know, you might have a couple of little clanks or something. Okay, it yeah. might be like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. might get crossed up a little bit when you know it's coming, you know, it might be a little slow. So, you know, you try to evaluate that as, hey, this, this pitcher out here has got some nasty stuff. And yep. this guy this guy looks like he's controlling him. He's handling he's him. And he he yep. seems like the pitcher and him are working good together. And he, he's confident out there. You know, he's not shaking a lot. He's not stepping off. You're keeping his rhythm. And that's the key. Know. Like you said, yeah. shaking off. I yeah. Mean, you take it, for instance, the more time you stand there shaking. Yeah, because it, it just it, gives you time. Gives when you time. get it, get the ball. This is what I want to throw. I got 100% conviction, and I'm going to throw it, and I'm going to execute the pitch. But when I can't get on your page, and you got to keep shaking, or, you know, even with the yeah, you with can't, the, you with can't the find your groove. now you can, and stuff. You can, yeah, and, you know, everything that's happening. It changes man. you. You step off. Now, all of a sudden, something doesn't feel right. You might even start second-guessing yourself mm-hmm. on what you wanted to throw originally. Yeah. So, you know, in these in this type of atmosphere, I mean, challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Try, try to catch, you know, a, a new pitcher every inning because mm-hmm. every guy that gets out there, the ball's going to do something, something different. different. So totally agree. that's how you challenge yourself to get better from that standpoint, but also to help how do I communicate to you to make you feel comfortable and then 
who's next? Right. You know, like the barber, who's right. next in the chair? Let's go get him. <laughs> you know, sometimes I, when I'm talking to these youngsters and I say, well, you know, what's the one thing that makes you, when you come into an event such as this and you're walking through the gate, what, what's the one thing you want to learn or take away from this game? How do you want to be perceived or, or better scouted in regards to the way you play? And most of them usually tell me. They usually say, hey, you know, one thing is here, I try to do the very best I can, number one, but also two, I want to be the best player on the field. And I say, mm -hmm. to be the best player on the field, you know, that's understandable. You're, in a, yeah. you're on a stage yeah. now where anyone at any given time could have that breakout moment. And so what you have to do is your off-season regimen. Mm -hmm. It has to be something that's yours. Yes. You know, I, I remember when I would hear guys like Bo, mm -hmm. Jackson, I, I would hear Saber Hagen and Google's eye, I heard them all the time, and they were like, just throw the drop ball. You know, it was, it was like, <laughs> people got a curveball. Yeah. But see, my dad and him played back in that time when it was Negro League times and stuff. Mm -hmm. So everybody had a curveball, but they also had a drop ball. Okay, okay. So basically it was like them saying and simulating that that ball drops off the table. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, and you heard yeah. those old sayings. Yeah. A guy says he has a slide, and then we tell him he has a slur, you know. Right. <laughs> he says he has a, a, a circle change up. And, but that, honestly, if you're listening, Gary guy, he'd say that's a, that's a screwball, son. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's just gotta so, be nasty because I'm gotta, having trouble catching it. So. I tell you. <laughs> and uh, I, I think that's been the most important part for these kids here is that, you know, you see so many talented catchers. You mm -hmm. see so many talented shortstops. But for me, the, the catcher is the central guy on the field next to the pitcher. Because what happens is that guy, he's going to catch. That pitcher's going to start in maybe one or two innings, and mm -hmm. he's out. The next guy comes in. You still have to be able to find a rhythm. And mm -hmm. sometimes it, it could change while that guy on the mound. Yes. And what would we yes. do then? Yeah. How would you handle that? I mean, from, from one inning to the next, because you might go through that first inning yeah. and you never get out of the, the windup. You know, one, two, three, you're feeling good. And then, you, you know, first pitch in the second inning and you give up a hit or somebody makes an error, and now you're – now you're out of the stretch, it's a different feel, you know, if that's your type of game, you know, or depending on the pitcher, obviously, you yeah. know, if you've got a reliever that only throws out of the stretch or what have you, but now you got a runner on, how do you keep his rhythm to make him feel comfortable that, hey, you, you still get the hitter. Yeah. Okay. Just give me a shot, but I'll, I'll take care of him. Mm -hmm. you, you can bounce this and I'm going to, I'm going to keep it in front and I'm going to keep the situation where it is. And so you got to take pride in that. That's and it, yeah. Every pitcher. And as you know, you like that. Oh, yeah. You don't want to have to worry about, I want to throw this pitch, but have a little second thought in your back of your mind that, you know, if I, if I throw the one, I, that good drop ball or that, Is he gonna that one right off the table right there, yeah. do I have confidence in him back there? So that's where we got to work, like you said, in your regiment, off season, before the game, before the something. Game, yeah. Have yeah. some type of plan. Some type Just of some plan. type of plan, right. you know. And I think you notice that with some of the kids that are the talent, you know, players that have a pretty good idea or grip of what they're trying to do. And as I'm watching them, I see this guy. He's flashing his signs, and he still feel confident going back to that sign again. Right, right. You know, because he's watch your warm up throws, but also too caught in the bullpen. So mm -hmm. there's things that you know you do learn. You know, one one question I, I'd like to have, and and. That's how do you feel about guys now more in the stretch, more than they've ever been? Well, I think it's, uh, I think it can help some guys. Now, I, I guess, it, you know, with, with the analytics taking over the game and you get instant feedback with, with all the technology. So, you know, if you're a pitcher that's set in your ways and, hey, we need you to do this differently, you better come. You better come yeah. to me with some numbers, <laughs> yeah. so I believe yeah, you. Yeah. You know you what I mean? Me you, gotta, you gotta help me out here. I, <laughs> I, I, I trust you, but I still want to be convinced. Right. So that's where the, you know, if that's what, what you know what we're trying to do or something, you know, to change it up a little bit so that you understand. But it could just be it, it could be me behind the plate and how I set up for you. Yeah. Do I set up early? Do I set up late? Do, do you want this? You want that? Yeah. You know, how do you want it? How do you want it? Yeah. Because I, Desi Relaford, he <laughs> he goes, I, I would do this, and I'm like, Desi, you're you're a shortstop. And he's like, Yeah, but when I'm on the mound, I got the ball, and I'm like, You got a point there. You got a good point. Nothing starts Man, without nothing you because you, you got the ball. Yeah. So hey, let me get on your page because you got the ball, and our 
I want to win, which means I'm I'm riding you. So let's go get them. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree, man. That's why I think this this game has evolved around a lot of the cybermetric stuff, sabermetric stuff, and how it, the numbers equate. Um, I was always a guy, I felt like, for me, I felt like if I was in the windup, I felt like I had a faster movement. I have, mm -hmm. I had those twitch muscles and it was moving quicker. It seemed like my arm was faster because it felt like everything was in a groove. I feel like you had like a little more rhythm. A little more rhythm. You got a little more time. Yeah. I can utilize my body rotationally. Stuff that we didn't know how to quantify back then, yeah, and, you know, with the numbers, but it was like, I can feel that. When I get to here, I know I'm going to go where I want to go. So. Well, and I was listening to the great uh, Greg Meyer once. He said, uh, <laughs> he said, Flash, <laughs> don't pitch it from, from the stretch. Mm -hmm. If they don't hit, you don't walk them. Yeah. They don't pitch from the stretch. And I started thinking about what he was saying. Got him one, four, five, side young ones. Oh, yeah. I mean, this guy, Z man, I can't pitch like this cat. <laughs> but his, his ideas and thoughts were if I think if you learn more about the stretch, which, you know, challenges you more, mm -hmm. then you'll have a better chance of being able to stay in the games longer because when the guy does get on base, it doesn't overwhelm you, doesn't take you away from right. your rhythm. And so I started working on the stretch a whole lot more. Like mm -hmm. way, I mean, sucks. When I first became a reliever, I still would go through the windup because sometimes I felt like my arm was dragging. Mm -hmm. But when I got in the stretch, I felt like, well, wait a minute. If I break this down and I actually get my hands up, I start in a rhythm like I'm in a windup, and once my knee lifts, I'm actually in the stretch. I'm, I'm right so where I, I need I'm to be right at this where point. I want to be. I'm mm -hmm. basically standing here with the ball in my hand, ready to break my hands. Right. So how many, how much of a, I mean, how much velocity I'm gonna use? you know, from the wind up to stretch. If anything, it may be one or two miles an hour. And, and that, that's the thing. It, are you more effective pitching at that velocity yeah. instead of at your max velocity? Yeah. Do you have a little bit better command, a little bit better control? Because you're seeing more, I think that's the go-to for a lot of pitching coaches when, you know, you, you seem at a, at a sink. At a sink, yeah. And just listening, you know, because when, when you're trying to get better, I'm trying to get better to hear what, pitching coach is telling you so that I can relate without the pitching coach having to run out every, right, right, yeah. you know, and now with the limited amount of times that you can go out. Obviously, it's a little different at this level, but you, you still, you got to be able to trust me like I'm relaying what the pitching coach is saying right. so that you're like, yeah, he's right. Uh, yeah. And I think it, it, moving down that stretch, like you said, if I get to here, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Or a hitter that spreads out with two strikes or something, just to simplify things but give you that one key that gets you back locked in because you kind of, you know, and we see, where you were going. Yeah, for me, I see it with, with the kids in travel ball, and it seems mm -hmm. like we got a pretty good feel for what they're trying to do. And for me, I, I, I bring into this, I think, you know, I don't want to change anything you do. I, I, you mm -hmm. know, if I ask you to get ready for a game, what's your routine? Show me that. Mm -hmm. How you get prepared for that game, right. that first inning, that first batter. Mm -hmm. You know, and if that's your successful way, I want you to work with that, you know. Uh, but now, here's an idea. Here's a thought behind that because what happens is if you are a person that has a really good fastball and when the wind up you have a really good fastball and you're not hitting the spots mm -hmm. but in a stretch somebody gets on something happens it's like you're a better pitcher right so i want to give you some analogy there you right. know that helps you out so I, and you see a lot of that here and i think most of the kids for the most part they seeing it on television mm -hmm. so they're trying it yes but you know, I've been around with, with a good all aspects while. of yep. things. Yeah, you know, all like they, they, they yep. see stuff with social media and Twitter and or, you know, X or you know the different parts of, of things where it's like, well, he's my favorite pitcher. Mm -hmm. I want to be like him. Be like him. What does he do? Or you know, if you're a softball player or whatever, and you're like, well, what does she do? Or whatever sport it may be, you see the person that you look up to, and you're like, can I be that? Can I, can I, I that? be them? You know, can I be like Mike? I tell you, you, know, <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny you say that because sometimes the kids, you know, when we could be at a select festival, we could be at in the, wherever we are. Mm -hmm. Kids ask this question: um, What was it like to face, you know, to be around George Brett? What was it like to be be around um, No Marcus to a part? Derek Jeter. Pedro. Got, like, totally different. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> totally different guys. The, the list is long. It's long. Yeah. It's totally different guys. But what you, you notice about them is there's going to be somebody mm -hmm. that has a certain type of game like this. Yeah. There's going to be a player that's mm -hmm. going to come in two, three years from now, maybe yeah. five years from now. Mm -hmm. maybe two, there's going to be another guy that looks like Mike on a basketball court. Right. And it doesn't matter the sport. <laughs> the, the, the scouting world is always looking for that comp. Yeah. You know, I mean, they see a guy that fits your... You know, the stature, the height, the profile, the width, the shoulder, you know, you can get all the analytics, but you go, 
That's Flash right That's there. the guy. That's him. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so what they, when they say, the first time, I got to tell you what they were saying. At first, they said, I don't know. A little midget. <laughs> yeah, you're under six and, feet. And, and you see, even, you know, the, with, with the Yamamoto signing recently, yeah. I mean, everybody's seen it. He doesn't fit the profile, the profile. of where yeah. you're looking. So you know, he doesn't yeah. check all the boxes. But he's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's a different, you know, it's it's a different at guy. At some point in time, it's like, we can do all the stuff, but if I can get you comfortable and you're comfortable with me, we're going to go out there and compete. We'll have some success. And that's all we can do. You know, and most coaches, and even all the way in the big leagues, most coaches want their players to have success. Oh, yeah. Most coaches want their players to have that wonderful night. And sometimes, even your best players, your best coaches, every now and then want to see you get knocked down a little bit. <laughs> you know, I asked, I asked my youngest son this, uh, uh, and we were in Chattanooga. Mm-hmm. And so I, and I remember so, because I, I would always, anytime I went to see him, I would always make sure I'd go to batting practice early, but I was, you know, slip in and he don't see where I am. <laughs> and I was watching this, this one day, he was taking batting practice. And this guy was throwing balls all over the place. It was bad as can be. Mm-hmm. And he was still just trying to keep his head down, stay with his good swing, mm-hmm. make contact, even though that can, you know, how that can be. The guy that's coming on the mound, that not, guy's not what he's going to see. Right. And so the next day I go back and I seen a guy just in a groove, mm-hmm. good fastball. I mean, he's just popping it. He, he, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, you know what? He's happy with this. Yeah. He's comfortable with this. And I asked him that night, I said, Nicholas, what, what, what do you think, man? About, where, where do you think you can learn the most from batting practice? From a guy that throws right over the top, just right there, you hit that, he in that spot every time, you just yeah. wetting it. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> at five o'clock, you can do stuff like that. How many five o'clock hitters we make it big? <laughs> so I said, to me, your best batting practice was that guy you had to make an adjustment yes. on. Yeah. And I said, think like that. I said, you know, the only reason I started off the far side of the rubber is because I wasn't good at throwing in on right handers. I wanted to give myself another 12 inches. If I miss, this least I didn't kill the poor guy. You know what I mean? Because I was just not that good throwing him right, right. right handers. Give yourself but, a little room for air. Give yourself some room. There you go. <clears throat> and I asked players that. Well, why do you stand on the far side of the rubber? Uh-huh. I said, Coach, because I like this and I like that. There's no wrong answer. If you can get strikes, you can get outs, get anybody out at any given point in time, then you, you stay comfortable. Yeah. And I don't think anybody, especially with the right minds in the game, they wouldn't ask you to change something that's been very productive for you. Correct. So whatever safe metrics does, it's a, it's a point in this game for everything technology-wise and everything that can be used. But at some point, you got to actually look on the field and say, that guy playing third base, if any ball is hit there, I ain't got to worry about it. That catch behind the plate, <laughs> I mean, you can bounce 15 of them. Yeah. Bottom line is he knows you're getting to that pitch to get us an out. And that's the way the game has and, to be played. And, and you know from the, you know, you've got a good defense behind you. Now you don't put the pressure on yourself to be so fine and execute every single pitch for a swing and a miss because you, you don't want them to put the ball in you play. Don't want them to play. <laughs> I tell you what, that's, I tell you what, I've been there a whole lot of times. And the moment you start, you know, it's it's almost like you poke it, you get yourself a little bit more wired up and amped up. And didn't turn around and take a look at where the guys are standing and positioning themselves. Yeah. They see some of them see the signs as well. Mm-hmm. That's when you get nailed. Seems like ball fall in, ground ball just as slow as can be. It's a base hit. Everything that can go bad goes bad. <laughs> but when you actually think about the importance of, hey, you know what? Those guys behind me, they're ready to make a play. Yeah. Yeah. And they feel like, man, I don't know where you hit this ball. Wherever you hit yeah. this ball, somebody gonna catch it. Yeah. And I, I when your when your fellow teammates see you prepared. They know you're ready. They know he's ready because I know he's prepared. So now I can be relaxed and go play hard for him. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the biggest thing. So it's, you know, who leads the team, what have you. Well, it starts right out there on the bump. Cause like I said, you got the ball. So you go out there and everybody knows that you worked hard and you're prepared. Like you said, hey, have a game plan. Control you control. Even if it's the wrong game plan, it's better than having no game plan. I, I totally agree. So you, you, you want to go out there and you're like, hey, we're going to go out there. Now, can I go throw my 100 pitches, seven, eight, nine innings or what, ha- you know, get my quality start <laughs> and, you know, arbitration's coming up next oh, yeah. year. I can get, get a little extra change in my pocket. Well, I'm, how, how many times do you start that game and it's the same exact you know, game plan from pitch one to pitch, you know, 100 for a starter, mm-hmm. or 75 or what have you, or, you know, you coming in as a reliever and, you know, I got to close the door here in the ninth, and what happens the first guy, 
you know, breaks a bat or something or ball falls in and you're like, okay, wait a second. That's not how it's supposed nah, to happen. I haven't even started sweating yet. <laughs> yeah, you know that, I mean? It's supposed to go that way. <laughs> that wasn't thought about. I'm already know? in trouble. I got well, first and right. second. Here comes a bunt. Well, we, we don't plan that, but we got to make the adjustment. So, you know, when you, when you can challenge yourself, especially in this environment, all these learning things, for me, it was like, even if I failed, I tried to learn something from yeah. it. You got to. Yeah, to, to. And, yeah. and, and listen to the other players. And, yeah. you know, especially at events like this where, you know, the players with a little more talent at certain ages can come to these events and, and you're going to have to raise your game a little bit. Mm-hmm. So they might be a little bigger than you, a little faster, you know, maybe throw a little harder. But you know what? I can get the same results. So what, what can yeah. I do? And that, that, that's the thing is that, even being the best player at some of these shows, let's just say I'm the best player on the blue team or somebody else is the best player on the blue team. It's not the actual game that I may learn from. Mm-hmm. It's actually watching in the dugout to see what I'm learning from those players and their actions and how they move, seeing how well they can move right or left. And then they just kind of, my next point of practice is getting out there, seeing how much more range I have. Right. You know? Or why do they you know, have so much? Like, what, what were you thinking? Previously. Previously. Or it yeah. might be, you know, uh, I mean, if, if people don't know, that, that curveball is like, it, it, you know, so it's almost like, hey, you know, it, yeah. <laughs> it's a live BP. I'm going to throw you a curveball. You ain't going to hit it. But from you coming, younger guy on the, on the staff or something, hey, man, how, how do you hold that? Yeah. You know, how, yeah, how do yeah. you get that bite? Yeah. Now, we can quantify that with, you know, the spin rates and depth and, you know, pitch shape and all that stuff. But. How do you do what you do? Now, I might not be able to do that, but it might help me if I can do something similar mm-hmm. to improve my stuff. Yeah. And that and doesn't I, come on the field. That comes you, from just sitting that's here a talking. Real, that's a really good point because there was a lot of times been in, you know, around some of the best arms in the bullpen. They would always say that. They'd say, you know what? If I had to ask you how to throw a curveball and you showed me, I probably still couldn't do it. Right. Okay, so give me something simple. Mm-hmm. And I'd say, well, well, think about this. If you could throw a slider. I throw a curveball. Mm-hmm. Why don't you try to throw a slurve? Why don't right. you try to throw something just off? Because what happens is a lot of times, I remember Bob Boone saying this to me, he said a lot of times the hitters don't want to swing early at a break, breaking ball to off speed, only because it was a breaking ball to off speed. Yeah. And they don't want to be, they know that get, that gets them out late. Yes. However, to be got, got out and I'm looking for it, I'm taking my chance mm-hmm. at it, and then I, I'm out. That's when they really just lose it. He says, so take your chances first pitch. Every now and then, you can start the game off with a curveball. I said, no, no, I can't do that. I mean, it don't seem, seem right. It doesn't seem right. <laughs> well, you can do that. Yeah. So it's, it's just the quality of game that we see with these young men. And I really like how some of the relievers, more than anything else, they have a routine, a plan, and then they come in the game and right away they throw strikes. I mean, that's yeah. just what this stage represents for them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, for, for me, the way I was always taught and whether you want to call it old school or what have you, because, you know, I'm older now. Yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> different things, top. you know, but it was like, hey, you, you have to throw enough strikes early in the game, whether you're the starter, you know, middle reliever, setup guy or closer, to where the kidders get in the box and want to be aggressive. Mm-hmm. So if, you're, if you can't get, you know, that strike one, now that it, you know how it, yeah, oh yeah. you see it in their eye. I mean, yeah. you're... you're, you're you know, I can feel it. You feel it. Oh, We're you like, feel hey, it. we need a strike. Hey, I need a strike here. You know? I know I felt it. I, I saw <laughs> so ball like, one. We, we, like, oh. we don't want to be pushed back in that corner yeah. where it's like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm playing poker and that. I, I'm all in. You but know what I, I mean? I, I got to do <laughs> And like we were talking early on, I, also, being out there as a starter, reliever, whatever, ball one, it was like everything tightened up. But you can tell with the body language of the yeah. catcher. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, I, I, I take Bob Boone, for instance, because Booney was just so... You know, he'd hit 260, but Booney was all about making a pitcher, uh, ha- helping him to have a quality start. Yeah. yeah. You know, that day was about mm-hmm. getting, I can get you one pitch this inning, just right. one pitch this mm-hmm. inning. If you need one every inning, we're going to still get the seven innings. Right. And however, that made you comfortable because your body language behind the mm-hmm. plate, the way you feel like I can just, you know what, I may not be right on this pitch, however, yeah. but I got to. And your other, teammates, the your other teammates feel that. They feel I mean, that. We've all, we've all. You know, had the moment where people were asking us, "Hey, are you okay?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yep. you, you look like you know you yeah. you want to crawl under that rock. <laughs> <they> or, wanna... <laughs> you're, you're looking, "Hey, when's he coming out to get me?" You know, what I mean, <laughs> oh man, I'm a little tight. Wiping, now. You know? take my hand, wipe my head. <laughs> so we've all been, you know, booed off the field or whatever. But mm-hmm. it's like, 
when you see that your teammates and they're rallying for you and they're like, hey, you're good, I yeah. got you. Yeah, yeah. You know, then it is. Like, it's, it's it's a confidence builder. Deep breath. Builder. Let's get back in. It's a it's a it's a help to what your attitude and morale, what you feel about this next pitch, and. It just, you know, you can turn around. I can sometimes you can stand on top of the mound, you feel like I'm gonna stand on top of a hill. And then like I'm standing over everybody looking, but you can see guys just like, hey man, let's go get them yeah. some tripping. I need this. And those ball. are the times you remember. Those are the times I remember. <laughs> you know, I mean it's it's a, we all want to win and all that, but this is one, you know, there's always a, you know moments here moments. and there where you're like, that was cool. That was that, yeah. That was a big league moment. <laughs> that was a big league moment right, right there, right you know? Yeah. And, and and everybody felt it, you know. Everybody you're, everybody you're feeling everybody together, feel it. you know, as a team and uh, I know you know it because you won. You know, there ain't nothing like winning. There ain't nothing like winning. You know, it, it's not like, hey, golf, yeah, I want to play good golf. But if I hit a good shot, there ain't no defense. I don't have to depend on anybody else. But yeah. if I mess up, it's all me. Oh. You know, but a team, well, I got to depend on each other. We so got it, yeah. Yeah, you need winning everybody. Winning a team in, sport is nothing like it. it there's, not a, there's not a sport. And I know football, you have a lot of players, NBA, soccer, all credit all of them for what they do. But in that clubhouse, man, it just becomes yeah. family. You have to. It's yeah. It's almost like your family, your kids become part of my family. It, it, it's it's an awesome feeling to have, and especially once if you get that opportunity. Right. And so you know, cherish here. Cherish here. Because yeah. because yeah. of the relationships that are being made as we speak, as this game's going on right now, and you got. Hey, I know, I don't know anybody from you know Wisconsin or something. I'm from San Diego. I'm from Atlanta, or I'm you know from here, and now I'm playing against him. Hey man, how's it going? I'm, I'm looking see you for, down the road. I'm looking you know? forward to seeing the, those guys that they talk about from New York, from Boston, yeah. from Florida, from Tennessee, California. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to getting to a perfect game event mm -hmm. and seeing how my talents equate and evaluates with theirs. It, and every time you're sitting in that dugout, you're learning something about somebody else's talents, not right. just your own. Yeah, and, and their thought process maybe from a regional standpoint of how, you know, they've grown up learning the game mm -hmm. or regardless of the background we're all trying to get to the same goal that same goal so how how can we get on that same pulling in the same direction in alignment that's the stuff that you got to take care of because you can control that yeah right like, totally yeah you get out on that field it's a lot of we we, we think we're in control <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> I guess. That's it. but are we really you know you throw a pitch once it leaves your hands Wait a minute, did he call the right pitch? Did I execute the right thing? If he hits it, are they gonna make the play? I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of factors that you gotta pull together yeah, for. Yeah. Um, you know. Even if it's, it's even if you're blowing system. everybody down yeah. and they ain't putting it, you know, they you never got it a, they're not putting it in play. I tell you, I was I was with uh, me and Girardi. I went, went with the Cubs and Girardi was I mean probably one of the most talented guys, physical guys, could have possibly played, you know, could have done more things in sports. Mm -hmm. Well, this one particular game, I come in and Joe was always, me and him had a little fun talking to each other. And so he puts down a sign and I shake. He puts down another sign and I shake. And he's still looking at me. Well, he puts down another sign and I just stand there and look at him. Yeah. So, <laughs> now, so you now know you what? get busted for the 20 second clock. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm out of there. You know? Hey, plan, you out of here. <laughs> but those <laughs> were the games. The game. You had it. It's yeah. like, he's like, He's just shaking a shake. So I, so he I, wants to be right. No, I'm going to be right. You, go, you know? yeah. So I, I, you know, he gave me a pitch. I, I figured, you know what? I, I guarantee, I'm thinking. Hitter might be thinking the same thing I'm thinking here. So you know what? I'm going to throw Joe something that I don't think he <laughs> be thinking is coming. I went on to throw a fastball. He gave me a curveball. I went on to throw a fastball. He, and he caught it. Strike three and the game over. So now I got to play tough guy. <laughs> I can see him coming towards me. He is really hot. Flash, what, what were you thinking? What are you doing? I knew you'd catch it. Yeah. And I walked off. <laughs> he said, we need to talk about that when you get yeah. in the locker room. I said, all right, Joe. But I got to play tough guy now because, yeah. of course, he was right. I should have, and I knew the pitch to throw, but also, too, it was just, I knew him. I knew him well mm -hmm. enough that he could make an adjustment. Because I'm right. feeling like all these people see what that's pitch a, I'm about to play. That's a trust. That's a trust. trust. Mm -hmm. I know. I know he's going to do it. I know he's going to do it, and that's what that's what you don't want him to do. But for the most part, you just have so much faith in that that guy in center field. You don't have to worry about it. And Willie Wilson said that. He mm -hmm. said, he said the, the best center fielders in the game don't have to dive. <laughs> he said, now when you do dive every now and then, there's nothing wrong with that. But the best players can get the best jumps. 
And now your arm becomes a better arm yes. because you're always in the right place. Right. I think I got about 100 clips out of that. Good. This stuff? This is awesome. This Where's is that? what you get when, if you've just been in a locker room, yeah, dude, and you've you been on a bus like, ride, yeah, you've been, you've been on a plane, yeah. you know, yep. you've had a couple drinks, you've probably done some things that you probably shouldn't have been doing, but then you're like, I got you. Yep. You're good. You know, and it, it's harder for the younger. I think that's where baseball kind of lost a little bit of that. I mean, you, as a young guy coming up in New York with the Mets, it's like, okay, I'm a nobody. Because that's how you got to feel. You got to stay grounded. You, you got to stay grounded. When you're well, coming up, yeah, you, you, haven't, you haven't earned your stripes. Yeah, don't, don't poke so, your chest out. So, yeah. you, you know, you get up there, and I'm looking, and I'm like, okay, we got Mike Piazza. We got Mo Vaughn. Got Robin Ventura, got Rare going yet, we got Roberto. You know, you go up and down the thing and you're like, 10 years, 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. I'm looking for one day. You know? <laughs> yeah, I've been there. How are they going to be like, hey, rookie, go get me a cup of coffee? Yes, sir. I'm going to get it. You want sugar and cream or what do you want with it? Why? Because you're actually speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Because when you don't speak to me, you don't even yeah. know, you have no idea who no I idea. am and you don't yeah, care. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's that. How I found out they loved me. You remember the old Texas Stadium? Mm hmm Sheridan Hotel. My rookie season and um, we come in there in the middle of the night. Only rookie on the team, they haven't brought AP up just yet. Mm -hmm. But either way, guys on the, on the team bus said, hey Flash, we don't have any sandwiches. Can you go in the kitchen and make sandwiches? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm supposed to say yeah to everything. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes, I can make sandwiches. So I go down to the front desk. I say, hey, I need to make these guys ham sandwiches. Mm -hmm. They were like, all right, no problem. Because, you know, every team stayed there. Mm -hmm. They knew everybody. Yes. So they, we don't have a cook on hand, but we have a couple staff members that'll help you out, get this mm -hmm. bread and the, what kind of bread. Right. I, Show you what you Just regular bread, whatever, yeah. mayonnaise, mm -hmm. little mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing there, and all of a sudden, Bo calls down. Hey, Flash. I want me uh, turkey, bologna, ham. I said, okay, no problem, Bo, I got it, I'll bring it up. I take Willie Wilson's his, take Bo's his, get back downstairs, and all of a sudden, I get a call from downstairs again, Sysa. <laughs> hey, Flash, heard you making sandwiches. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm making sandwiches, man. Yeah. I make another sandwich. <laughs> And, and they, they say, I, I wanted mustard, not mayonnaise. Yeah, so I make you go back and do it again. <laughs> do it. They, they weren't going to eat it anyway, yeah. you know. But it, 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 that's what brings that's guys what together. Guys, that's, yeah. that's, that's the team yeah. and, you know, learning different people. And then now now they'll, they'll talk to you. And now they'll say, hey, this is how I throw my breaking ball. Yeah. But well, when and, I and, really want to get the guy out, this is how I hold. Oh, absolutely. Try doing this. Try it. Well, yeah. you, you can't put a price tag on that. Well, and see, that's why I thought even with the, some of the great players that play the game, you know, Gary Gaetti, mm -hmm. third baseman with me in Kansas City, man, one of the best teammates I ever had. He said, he came to me, I had a decent season. He said, Flash, just listen to me. I said, what's that, G? He said, if you can get a changeup, now I know you got two curveball, and nobody don't want to deal with your curveball. Right. If you can get a changeup, Flash, I promise you, you'd be in the top 10 in the starting pitcher. But I, you know, for me, I, I, I just didn't feel, I couldn't right then throw a ball that was that slow. You right. know what I mean? I was mm -hmm. almost like, if I'm gonna get beat, I might as well get beat throwing hard. You throwing know? my best stuff. My best stuff. However, now that I understand the changeup, now that I can use, I mm -hmm. throw it and circle change, straight change, mm -hmm. for, uh, for, I can do all of those pitches what, now. Split change, you know, yeah. whatever grip we got to do to, yeah. to, you know, so get, some, uh, get some spin off. Get some spin it. off. Get That's some, why I, I talk to kids and whatever makes that ball feel comfortable to you in your hand. Mm -hmm then we can work with that. Right. You can actually get more out of that. Mm -hmm. You get more out of your delivery, your body, but first you got to recognize that holding that ball in your hand, yeah. that you can do that job. And that means get, <laughs> get it to the guy that's catching that ball. Right. That's what it means. Mm -hmm.